So the girl they've been protecting, the one they've kept hidden in the clean brick house on the hill surrounded by the scenic pine trees to the west, the pristine green fields with no power lines to the south and east, and Crystal Lake to the north, she's changed. They didn't tell her about the war, uh, the sick kids in the village, or the price of the air purifier, her tutors, and the radiated food. Everyone wears gloves. They keep conflict away. It's expensive to make the food healthy and taste like she likes, to bend light so it's a hot day when she wants the sun, to find a plot for a new fun story without fear or dragons. She believed everything about their world and never heard the shears at night clipping the silent lawn or her split ends. But last week, she woke shaking and screaming, screaming about angels. She doesn't know demons or devils or the way uh, paint chips from walls. To her white room, they rushed calmly with the hushed clowns and the happy juice, but she screamed, bit the makeup face and invented words. She screamed until the doctor pilled her and listened to how the angels quit singing. The angels quit singing, he asked. Not yet, but they will, she trembled, tapping her curly-haired head against the wainscoting. Darling, there's no conflict in the world. The angels will always sing. He inflicted a smile. No, no, she said. 10,000 years from now, on some Tuesday, they'll quit singing for a while, less than a second, a blink, half a blink, no singing, there will be no singing, and I think I'll go far away from this dream you've locked me inside. With that, she cried, and clinging to her sides, she fell asleep and hasn't woken. No, no, I'm joking, I lied. She's eating well, playing well, thinking their happy thoughts, and she has no idea the angels will quit singing. <laughs>